Hi, um, I'm Nancy Northern. I'm with the Defense Threat Reduction Agency and Joint Science and Technology Office of the um, Chemical and Biological Defense Program. I'm actually here to take advantage of the incredible group that John has brought together to tell you about our new S&T funding opportunity that seeks to change the way we do biosurveillance. Uh, Einstein's quote about insanity really applies to biosurveillance in the Chem Biodefense Program. We traditionally create very bulky, mission-specific stovepipe systems that become outdated, and this problem requires a new approach. Our leadership tasked us with thinking about the biosurveillance mission and how to execute it in the 21st century. We held a workshop with people from across the user, performer, commercial industry, and stakeholder community. At the beginning, we asked them to imagine an interoperable biosurveillance ecosystem that would dramatically accelerate our detect, identify, respond capabilities. We then provided three exemplars of information dominance, the concept that we have sufficient information to stop anything we don't want to occur. We need to be able to translate that information into better decisions made and implemented faster than a pathogen can re uh, react. The overarching principle was um, an ability to rapidly connect people to the data they needed to make better decisions. We asked the workshop participants to brainstorm these implications for biosurveillance. We also provided a typical bioevent timeline to workshop participants and asked them what was needed to move the entire timeline to the left. We asked there were, where there were gaps that impacted their ability to be successful. Typically, these lanes are not very well connected and actions proceed from left to right in a sequential manner. At the close of the workshop, we realized a new concept for biosurveillance, one in which people, data, and tools are connected in a virtual space, which we call the biosurveillance ecosystem. The key areas of innovation being an ability to rapidly share data across the groups, a mechanism for dynamic feedback loops, and a collaborative engagement process. So we want, to integra we want to virtualize and integrate the biosurveillance timeline to go from linear and sequential to one that is much more integrated and connects people, data, and tools with the plug-and-play tool set. Um, we want to incorporate citizen surveillance and social power. I usually take about 15 to 20 minutes to explain this slide, but the hashtag DDD version is that for the first time, we are going to interconnect all of the people working in surveillance, investigation, and response activities um, and include or open source information and citizen surveillance um, through the biosurveillance ecosystem. Essentially, we're proposing that we could become the system integrator for biosurveillance S&T. We plan to use commercial cloud technologies as, as an integration backbone and provide a biosurveillance app store. You've all downloaded apps. We plan to use the same approach and require performers to create a downloadable software development kit. This plug-and-play framework will make our biosurveillance S&T investments much more efficient. Efforts will be designed to plug in and as such become accessible through the ecosystem. We don't have to keep reinventing the IT piece. Our strategy is all about the user. Each performer will be required to build its own version of a biosurveillance workbench. I'll go into more detail on that. The ecosystem will have a global reach and will require the use of open source information, social media, and new practices such as crowdsourcing. Our BA is out and indicates we're seeking a consortium response with the following skills and experience listed on the slide. Um, we are we are virtually requiring that each uh, performer come in as a team. This is a new um, project model approach where we will define what with the users, then design, build, and test in phased competitive prototype-based approach. A roadmap is provided in our BAA, and it details the approach in which only successful performers will move forward. Ultimately, the workbench is designed to force multiply the analysts, not replace them. We are engaging users across the DOD and interagency to collect workflows that we will provide to successful teams. The workbench should be customizable based on users' workflow. The workbench has three main components. The first is a user interface that will present data and information to analysts, as well as assist in preparing required reports. It will provide consistent set of user metaphors regardless of how and where or where the user is accessing it. The content task manager will coordinate the user's context and workflows by orchestrating the appropriate data sources, analytic services, and tools from the ecosystem and provide them through the user interface. It will also provide links to collaborative um, services appropriate to the current workflow. The last component, the information broker, will connect data and information and knowledge sources within and external to the ecosystem. It will map data needs to its understanding of where and how those data needs can be fulfilled, as well as anticipate the user's needs to autonomously retrieve the required data. This is just a visual picture of the work, workbench and how we envision them. This was an extremely quick rundown of our biosurveillance ecosystem concept. I typically take about an hour to go through these slides and provide much more context, but I wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to tell you where we are trying to go in case you might be able to help us get there. 
This is a link to our BAA. If you just Google, uh, Google FBO BSV ecosystem, you should pull it up. There's a wealth of background information as well as all of these slides and slides that we pre presented at an industry day last month. Um, there's also a LinkedIn site for any teams looking to um, team up with other people interested in this opportunity. Thank you.